What does it mean to be a human being? What we see, uh, first thing we see in the Bible um, is God creating the heavens and the earth. And one of the first things that God does, he separates light from darkness. And then he begins to divide uh, the waters from the earth and he makes the earth come out of the waters and he puts some lights in the sky and things like that. So God ends up creating this place for humanity uh, to live, for Adam and Eve, male and female uh, to live. And what it means to be a human being from the very beginning is God tells him to go be fruitful and multiply, go have a bunch of babies and subdue the earth. And so what it means to be a human being is actually to take dominion of things. And as uh, Christians, we're often terrified of that language. We have you know, all forms of colonialism and imperialism and hegemony and all these things we're terrified of doing. But the reality of it is that's in, in, in a righteous way, that's what the Bible is getting at. And all of us want righteous dominion. All of us want good dominion. And there's obviously uh, uh, one of the things we're always going to have in the Bible is in a sense a false humanity. Um, just as we have false gods, we can have a false humanity. And what it means to be a human being is ultimately is to reflect the image of God. And what, what, what's the first thing we see God doing? We see God creating. We see God dividing. We get, see God naming, uh, separating, putting places in the categories. And Genesis 1, 2 says that earth was formless and void. God gives it form. God fills the void. So ultimately, in part, what it means to be a human being is, yes, to worship God. That's part of it. Um, that's the central aspect of what it means to be a human being. It also means that we love our neighbor, but part of what all that looks like in very practical terms is when you wake up in the morning and you get dressed because even Yahweh clothes himself. And so we clothe ourselves with a proper uniform to our role and our function in the world. If you're a police officer, if you're a judge, if you're a minister, if you're a garbage man, you dress appropriately to that role just as Yahweh at certain times puts on certain outfits and everything else for the role that he's taking on as a redeemer and things like that. We also will get dressed in the morning, then we go out and we take dominion in the way that the Lord has called us to take dominion. And so for some people that's preaching, for some people that's being a civil servant, for some people that's being a doctor, whatever that is, uh, when you go into work and you divide and you name and you separate and you put things in its proper place, that's what it means to be a human being. It's not just living up on a mountain somewhere, you know, singing hymns, although as Christians, we want to gather together and sing hymns. And so it's not less than those things, but it's much more than that. And so if you begin to sit down and you just read the Bible, uh, especially if you read the Old Testament, I feel like oftentimes we allow ourselves to separate the New Testament off of it. You just read the Old, Old Testament. It's so earthy. I mean, it's so physical. We hate, and even as Christians, we're often, oh, I can't believe all the law and all the bulls and all the goats and a temple and a tabernacle. And we don't love those things, but that's how God chose to reveal himself. And he's like, oh yeah, and I'll meet with you as you feed me bulls and goats and I'll delight in what you're doing. And God, believe it or not, and even Psalm 149, which is a pretty tough uh, psalm, I won't read the whole thing, but uh, part of Israel worshiping God is uh, what he tells us is, uh, um, uh, let them praise his name with dancing, make melody to him with tambourine and lyre, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. So even part of what it means to be a human being, uh, assuming you're properly reflecting the image of God, is God takes pleasure in you. God delights in you. God loves his world. God loves his creation. So what does it mean to be a human being? It, 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 it means camping out in Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter two, prior to the fall, and just asking yourself, what is it that God wants humanity to do here? What does it look like for if Adam and Eve had not rebelled against God? Now that sin has entered the picture, obviously it becomes a little more complicated, but what it means to be a human being is fundamentally to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself, and a central aspect of that is taking dominion of the world, subduing the world around you. And that idea of subduing, again, we're not comfortable with this, but when Israel goes into the promised land, they subdue the nations. That's all that language that uh, Adam is supposed to do. And so if you realize that there's a uh, holy of holies and then the land or the, the, the garden of Eden, which is like the holy of holies, then you have the land of Eden, which is like the uh, holy place. Then you have the outer courts, which is like the rest of the world. They were to make the rest of the world like that Garden of Eden. That's what it means to subdue. Uh, that was the work and guarding uh, that Adam was supposed to do and take place. So that's what it means to be a human being. Oftentimes, we, as Christians, we can make it to be something spiritual, just my soul, just something that takes place in my heart, rather than something that's uh, thoroughly physical. But what it means to be a human being is, is thoroughly physical from begin to end, and that's why God himself became a man, died, and was resurrected on the third day, and will be humans, physical, fleshly human beings for all eternity.